Hello, thank you for watching my video. <clears throat> Are polygamists fundamentalist Mormons? Mormons or the true Mormons? <clears throat> Here's my answer to that. This time I'm going to be speaking about them third person to you who are not Mormon and not polygamists. <clears throat> and I didn't repeat myself. Maybe you know what my uh, short answer would be to that question already. Mormonism, Mormon, Mormon religion, is a colloquial name for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's not the official name of the church, but society has been calling us that since the 1800s. And since that's the name society has been calling us, that's us. Not splinter groups, not break-offs. So, <sighs> let's do some uh, brief history of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It started in <clears throat> Glare. It started in 1830 in, there we go, New, there we go, got the glare out of the way, New York. And before the 1830s were done, persecution had caused us to be chased to Ohio and Missouri. Off the top of my head, I'm not remembering what the exact year it was. Well, in the, uh, still in the 1830s, we got chased out of Ohio. We were all in Missouri. <laughs> and then... Governor Lilliburn Boggs uh, made a made it legal to kill a Mormon just for being a Mormon in Missouri. Then we ended up in Illinois, building a city named Nauvoo, and clustering there, making the biggest city in Nauvoo, if I'm remembering my Chris, my, in Illinois, if I'm remembering my history correctly. <coughs> and then in 1844. Um, the man God used to found the church, God is the founder of Mormonism, but he did found it by using a man, and I'm not offended if somebody who's not a Mormon uh, doesn't want to give God credit and wants to call Joseph Smith the founder. He was martyred, and then uh, within a couple of years of that, we were moving to Utah. There we go, to Utah, not to Glare. <clears throat> and Brigham Young is quite famous, maybe more famous than Joseph Smith. Um, for his, in outside of uh, people who study Mormonism a lot, um, <coughs> for his part in settling the West and the uh, settlement of Utah. <coughs> Brigham Young was the apostle who had been ordained an apostle the first. In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, aka Mormonism, the next president of the church is the apostle who's been an apostle the longest. <clears throat> and it's important to note that um, let's see that's the fundamental and following the living prophet and believing that God can change specific commandments that he tells us about how to live our life. He's never going to have a prophet come out and say well uh, we've been saying for so many years, and it's in the scriptures, that God created the earth, but he didn't. Or Jesus Christ doesn't matter anymore. But things like, now it's time to re uh, stop drinking alcohol. Now it's time to stop chewing tobacco. That's how you live your life. That's a, a specific thing. And God did tell us, did, at that in the 1830s or 40s, to live polygamy. But that doesn't make it a fundamental because it was done in the 1800s. <coughs> and quick little side note. <coughs> when Joseph Smith um, was martyred and the Mormons moved to Utah, there were two major or big break-offs. I'm not sure if there were minor ones. Uh, one called themselves the Reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints until 2001, and I still prefer to call them that because they changed their name to Community of Christ. And the other group called themselves the Church of Christ. Community of Christ, Church of Christ. 
Come on, guys. How about if we just stick with the organized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, so it's less confusing and trying to remember if somebody say community or church, if you're having a conversation with them about the groups. <coughs> so, I, um, but because we believe that the living prophet, uh, coming from the apostles, we believe that those splinter groups um, have no actual priesthood authority from God and do not have the living, true apostles or prophets um, guiding them now. But to their credit, the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ and the Church of Christ, is it Church of Christ, Temple of the Church of Christ, they don't call themselves Mormons. <coughs> so, after Brigham Young, we were, during Brigham Young, we were living polygamy. That's when it became more public than it was when Joseph Smith was alive. When Joseph Smith was alive, it was very um, hushed up and done on the down low, low key. In other words, <coughs> after Brigham Young was John Taylor, whose son later was excommunicated for not giving up on polygamy when it was time to stop it. <coughs> Speaking of excommunication, um, one reason that uh, you who are not Mormons don't get to say who is a Mormon is because the church keeps track of who its members are. There's a he earthly head of the church. Uh, we have r rules about to be a member, do this and do that. we got rules that say, here's the list. Do one of these things, you're out. No longer a member. Excommunicated. Anytime there's a group that does that, has rules about what you do to be a member, rules about what gets you kicked out and kicks people out, then anybody outside that group doesn't get to say, this is that group. They really are. No, it's the group that keeps track of who its members are and excommunicates people. And has an organized chain of command and a, a leader or a group of leaders that um, everyone answers to. Anyone outside that group does not get to throw people into that group. <laughs> and after uh, John Taylor was Wilford Woodruff. And Wilford Woodruff received a revelation from God about the subject of polygamy. The living prophet at that time received a revelation from God about polygamy. That means whatever he had to say is more fundamental than what we had been doing um, before that. Press dispatches have been sent for political purposes from Salt Lake City, which has been which have been widely published, to the effect that the Utah Commission, in their recent report to the Secretary of the Interior, alleged that plural marriages are still being solemnized, and that 40 or more such marriages have been contracted in Utah since last June or during the past year. Also, that in public discourses, the leaders of the church have taught, encouraged, and urged the continuance of the practice of polygamy. I, therefore, as President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, do hereby, in the most solemn manner, declare that these charges are false. We are not teaching polygamy or plural marriage, nor permitting any person to enter into its practice. And I deny that either forty or any number, other number of plural marriages have, let's see, have during that period been solemnized in our temples or in any other place of our territory. One case has been reported in which the parties allege that the marriage was performed in the endowment house in Salt Lake City in the spring of 1889, but I have not been able to learn who performed the ceremony. Whatever was done in this matter was without my knowledge. In consequence of this alleged occurrence, the endowment house was by my instructions taken down without delay. And as much as laws have been enacted by Congress forbidding plural marriages, which have been pronounced constitutional by the court of last resort, uh, and that's what the terminology he was using to describe what we would now call the Supreme Court. I hereby declare my intention to submit to those laws and to use my influence with the members of the church over which I preside to have them do likewise. There is nothing in my teachings to the church or in those of my associates during the time specified which can be reasonably construed to inculcate or encourage polygamy, 
And when any elder of the church has, been, has used language which appear to convey any such teaching, he has been prom promptly removed. And I now publicly declare that my advice to the Latter-day Saints is to refrain from contracting any marriage forbidden by the law of the land. Signed, Wilfred Woodruff. President Lorenzo Snow f offered the following. I move, recognizing Wilfred Woodruff as President of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. Mormonism, and the only man on earth at the present time who holds the keys of the sealing ordinances, we consider him fully authorized by virtue of his position to issue the manifesto which has been read in our hearing, which is dated September 24, 1890, and that as a church and general conference assembled, we accept his declaration concerning plural marriages as authoritative and binding. The vote to sustain the foregoing motion was unanimous. October 6, 1890. Excerpts from three addresses by President Wilford Woodruff regarding the manifesto. The Lord will never permit me or any other man who stands as president of the church to lead you astray. It is not in the program. It is not in the mind of God. If I were to attempt that, the Lord would remove me out of my place, and so he will any other man who attempts to lead the children of men astray from the oracles of God and from their duty. It matters not who lives or who dies or who is called to lead the church. They have got to lead it by the inspiration of Almighty God. If they do not do it that way, they cannot do it at all. I have had some revelations of late, and very important ones to me. I will tell you what the Lord has said unto me. Let me bring your minds to what, has, what is termed the manifesto. The Lord has told me to ask the Latter-day Saints a question, and he also told me that if they would listen to what I said to them and answer the questions put to them by the Spirit and power of God they would answer all alike and they would all believe alike with regard to this matter the question is this which is the wisest course for the Latter-day Saints to pursue to continue to attempt to practice plural marriage with the laws of the nation against it and the opposition of sixty millions of people and at the cost of the confiscation and loss of all the temples and the stopping of all the ordinances therein both of the living and of the dead, and the imprisonment of the First Presidency, and the Twelve, and the heads of the families of the Church, and the confiscation of personal property of the people, all of which of themselves would stop the practice, or after doing and suffering what we have, th through our adherence to this principle, to cease to practice and submit to the law, and through doing so leave the prophets, apostles, and fathers at home, so that they can instruct the people and attend to the duties of the Church, and also leave the temples in the hands of the saints so that they can attend to the ordinances of the gospel, both for the living and for the dead. The Lord showed me by vision and revelation exactly what would take place if we did not stop the practice. If we, did, if we had not stopped it, you would have had no use for any of the men of this temple at, in Lo, at Logan. For all ordinances would have stopped throughout the land of Zion. Confusion would reign throughout Israel and many men would be made prisoners. This trouble would have come upon the whole church, and we should have been compelled to stop the practice. Now the question is whether it should be stopped in this manner, or in the way the Lord has manifested unto us, <clears throat> and leave our prophets and apostles and fathers free men, and the temples in the hands of the people, so that the dead may be redeemed. A large number has already been delivered from the prison house in the spirit world by this people, and shall the work go on or stop? This is a question I lay before the Latter-day Saints. You have to judge for yourselves. I want you to answer it for yourselves. I should not, I should not answer it, but I say to you that it is exactly the condition as we, the condition we as a people, would have been ha would have been in had we not taken the course we have. I saw exactly what would have come to pass if there was not something done. I have had this spirit upon me for a long time, but I want to say this. I should have let all the temples go out of our hands. I should have gone in prison myself and let every other man go there, had not the God of heaven commanded me to do what I did do. And when the hour came that I was commanded to do that, it was all clear to me. I went before the Lord and wrote that the Lord had wrote what the Lord had told me. Lord told me to write. I leave this with you. 
for you to contemplate and consider. The Lord is at work with us. Cache Valley State Conference, Logan, Utah, Sunday, November 1st, 1891. Let's see. Uh, the first paragraph was from uh, General Conference, October 6th, 1890. <sighs> third qu uh, third uh, excerpt. Now I will tell you what was manifested to me and what the Son of God performed in this thing. All these things would have come to pass as God Almighty lives, had not that manifesto been given. Therefore the Son of God felt disposed to have that thing presented to the church and to the world for the purposes in his own mind. The Lord had decreed the establishment of Zion. He had decreed the finishing of this temple. He had decreed that the salvation of the living and the dead should be given to all that's given in these valleys of the mountains. And Almighty God decreed that the devil should not thwart it. If you can understand that, that is a key to it. From the discourse in the sixth the sixth session of the dedication of the Salt Lake Temple, 1893. Now you've heard what funda what is really fundamental to Mormonism, and it should be clear to you that <coughs> polygamists are not the true Mormons, or fundamentalist Mormons, or Mormons. And a quick uh, related topic. Um, some of you may be wondering, the polygamy was stopped when the property of the church was about to be taken. Um, would a change in the laws of the United States of America change what we, um, what we would do? Would legalizing polygamy instantly make Mormons engage in polygamy again? No. Oh, and you might be wondering, do I believe polygamy will make a, a comeback? And polygamy authorized by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or among Mormons. Um, <coughs> uh, polygamy being legalized in the United States of America will not cause an automatic return to polygamy. God told his prophet it was time for us to stop. Um, and let's see, in the Book of Mormon, which is fundamental to Mormonism, Jacob chapter 2, let's see, it says, Wherefore, thus saith the Lord, chapter 2, verse 25, I have led this people out of the land of Jerusalem by the power of mine arm that I raise, might raise up unto me a righteous branch from the fruit of the loins of Joseph. Wherefore, 26, I the Lord will not suffer that this people shall do like unto them of old. Wherefore, my, my brethren, hear me and hearken to the word of the Lord, for thou shalt not any man among you have, save it be one wife and concubines, none. Let's see. Uh, where's the verse that says <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, so there's a verse I was thinking about. For if I will, verse 30, if I will say, if the Lord of hosts raise up seed unto me, I will command my people, otherwise they shall hearken unto these things. So we need a specific command from God to be polygamous. In other words, to use some computer terminology, God's default setting on polygamy is not. <clears throat> I don't have an opinion and I have received no revelation from God. <laughs> um, if I did claim a revelation from God, you should ignore it because I'm not the prophet um, about whether polygamy will be practiced again by Mormons if it becomes legal according to the law of the land. If Mormons practice polygamy again, it will be because God gives a specific revelation to his living prophet at the time. Right now, that's Thomas Spencer Monson telling us to do it. Thank you for your time and watching me.
If you want to learn more about Mormonism, go to mormon.org or lds.org and have a good day.